Babylon talking about conspiracy theories on YouTube. <clears throat> Tuesday, April 4th, uh, 14th. It's Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Noel King. I'm Steve Inskeep. And I'm Rachel Martin. When Congress holds hearings about the role of social media in the spread of misinformation, they call the CEOs of Twitter and Facebook, but neither has as much influence as the CEO of Google, because Google owns YouTube and YouTube's reach around the world is massive. According to the company, which is an NPR supporter, every day people watch one billion hours of video on YouTube. One billion. Almost 80% of all internet users around the world have a YouTube account. And content on the platform is available in 80 languages. So wrap your head around those numbers and then think about how quickly a single piece of false information can spread. President Trump won four more years in office last night. At this point, no, there is, at this point, there is evidence in the form of evidence, 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 testimony, witness testimony, testimony documenting numerous incidents. At this point, there is evidence in the form of evidence, testimony, documenting numerous incidents of Trump trying to steal it. None of that is true. And all of those videos are still accessible on YouTube. That misinformation distorts reality, and it changes how some people see the world, and it changes them and their relationships. And that's what we're going to look into this morning as part of NPR's ongoing exploration of mis- and disinformation. My father has always been the most gentle person that you can imagine and loving, and you, you didn't see him get angry a lot. This is 39-year-old Renee Ekwoge. Growing up in Georgia as a kid, she remembers her dad full of wonder. You know, I remember getting up in the middle of the night and it was just me and him and watching the hail Bob comment, you know, when I was like 15 years old. And that was just like a, you know, thing that we did. You got up in the middle of the night and you watched a comment. As she got older, her dad's wonder turned in a much darker direction. So, um, after 9-11, um, he got very into the 9-11 truther movement how you know the jet fuel can't melt steel beams i think is kind of like a a meme at this point right and then there were all the wild stories about government plots to poison the population she engaged him just enough to be polite and then she tried to change the subject it was irritating but manageable and then uh the world started being flat right all these other things are beds, you're going to kill people you are absolutely going to kill people with these vaccines. Like sending them out to the world with these psychos everywhere, like this is up. Renee says she hasn't seen her dad in about a year. She hasn't talked to him for at least four months and she's not sure what the path back looks like. Is a part of you grieving your relationship right now? Absolutely, I mean, it's, yeah. I, I mean, I, I can't even like think about it because it's, you know, I mean, like, what am I supposed to tell my daughter? You know, she's five years old, but, you know, I, I don't know how to tell her. Like, hey, grandmother called for your birthday, but, but Pops didn't. But he did send the string of angry videos for us to watch. You know, it's like, but how, how am I supposed to, to reconcile that? Renee was talking with me, answering my questions, and then she shifted. And she started talking directly to her father and other people's family members who've been lost to online conspiracy theories. If you hear this, you know, like, we, we miss you. We all miss you. This is NPR News. According to the company, which is an NPR supporter,